And our final team today is Team Modulo Prosthetics from the University of Pennsylvania. Hello, we are Modulo Prosthetics, and today we are presenting our novel device intended to increase the accessibility of high-tech and high-quality prosthetic devices to the global amputee population through our body-powered haptic feedback thumb prosthetic. To set the scene, while there are 45,000 partial hand amputations done annually in the U.S., the global amputee population is much larger, with currently 38 million amputees internationally. In particular, digit amputations are the most common type of amputations, with 20% of all digit amputations specific to the loss of the thumb, resulting in about a 40% decrease in hand function. Additionally, 94% of amputees express significant stress and anxiety-related mental health problems attributed to their amputation, attesting to the significant toll that these amputations take on the patients. Despite their high global occurrence and level of impairment, prosthetics are highly understood in international settings and highly underutilized in low-resource settings. One of the limitations for this adaptation is due to the prosthetics being highly expensive, ranging from $5,000 to $70,000 per digit. They're also restricted in the difficulty of replacing broken parts and the need for them to be highly customized per patient. Low resource settings often lack accessibility to advanced technology products, such as haptic feedback, which are needed for these devices. To address these global needs, we have created a 3D printed, adjustable, haptic feedback digit prosthetic, which will bridge the current gaps in the field. The 3D printed nature of our device heavily reduces the manufacturing costs to under $250 and allows for replaceable parts to be easily obtained, minimizing the difficulty of maintenance in a low resource environment. Our design is modular and adjustable, meaning that a single device can fit multiple patients. This avoids elongated turnover time required by traditional custom-made prosthetics. Our device makes haptic feedback affordable to low-income populations, increasing the accessibility of innovative technology products and providing the most advanced care to all. Our functional prototype integrates the mechanical, electrical, and strap components into a sleek and intuitive design. Mechanically, our device is able to mimic thumb movement through a four-bar linkage mechanism. Bending of the remaining joint allows the user to actuate movement of the prosthetic tip as shown to the right. Electrically, we implemented a haptic feedback system that allows the user to assess the strength of the force applied on the tip through a vibration motor that varies in amplitude and frequency in relation to the applied force. To maximize usability and comfort, the prosthetic is fully adjustable at the wrist, dorsal side of the hand, thumb, and a residuum site through Velcro straps attached via 3D printed buckles. Next, we will show a video illustrating how these components may interact when the user performs an everyday task, tapping through their phone. We plan to continue improving our design through patient testing, tailoring components to allow function for specific activities, and increasing the sensitivity of the haptic system in future iterations. With Modulo, we bring back function to your fingertips. Thank you for listening. We will now open up the floor to Team Modulo Prosthetics for questions from the audience. I see Dr. Green, you're unmuted. Would you like to offer the first question? Yes, I, I, maybe I, I missed it, but what is available competitively right now in this arena? Uh, yeah, thank you for your question. So um, there's a couple, I guess, of the main competitors in terms of body power prosthetics, which is what modular prosthetics focused on. I would say the biggest competitor in the market currently naked prosthetics. Um, they do, I guess, the majority of partial hand amputation prosthetics. Um, oh, but however, they're very um, high cost, as well as we've heard that they take a very long time because they do custom prosthetics only. And so the turnaround time for these patients to actually get their prosthetics takes a long time, which is one of the main reasons why a lot of people opt not to choose naked prosthetics. Um, so that's also a very big gap in the field that we've noticed and that we are focusing on currently. 
the current Nagel project also does not contain any form of sensory feedback, which is what um, I guess it's a really big novel component of our device, and that including haptic feedback will allow the user to better understand how much force they're grabbing their objects with and thereby restore much of their function in terms of gra grasping and pinching everyday objects. Do you do you think it will be more applicable to recent amputees as compared to older amputees that have found adaptive ways to get around it and are quite seemingly happy with with their limitation in that way? Because often that's the case that 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 uh, people that have adapted would rather just not have any additional help at all, as opposed to a recent amputee, which would start fresh with it, so to speak. Yeah, so we've also noticed that trend in the patient population. One of the things that we want to focus on is our design is so intuitive and we expect little to no training is required for a device. So we expect that without this new, um, without the turnaround period to get the prosthetic, in addition with the little training, a lot of people will opt to use our prosthetic and so they would no longer need to adapt. Obviously, if a patient chooses that that's what they wish to do, um, that's definitely a choice up to them, but we're just trying to offer something that's a little bit more intuitive and will require a little to no work on the patient side in order to use our device. And what sort of ranges of forces in Newtons can it sense and adapt to? 20. Yeah, um, the, so the, the force sensor is up to 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20 Newtons, sorry about that. 20 newtons? Uh, uh, the 20 newtons, though um, the durability of the device can take much, much more force. Um, we did some testing with a uh, like simulation. We applied mm -hmm. like 10 pounds of force across the thumb tip just for the like 3D printed nature of it. Um, and it would not break in, in those settings where, you know, where they're pinching it in that regard. But the actual force sensor itself is up to 20 newtons. Okay, thank you. I'll hop in. I see a synergy in questions uh, from audience members in the chat. Do you have any feedback from potential users? Um, yeah, so we've actually talked to a couple patients as well as other stakeholders in the field, including cl clinicians and other different um, personal hand and hand um, prosthetists. Uh, so we got a good survey of what the current field as it stands. With our current and newest prototype, we haven't been able to test on it yet, but that is something that we continue and hope to do in the future, um, including with different IRBs and stuff once we continue to evolve our device. Thank you for sharing that. And I see a question from Dr. Machen in the chat. Um, have you done any analysis on financial viability in low resource settings? Um, so um, definitely we know that like we use the th 3D printed nature of it and that like that's a pretty accessible thing like here in the States, though it is much more expensive um, and maybe a low resource countries. Um, we know that at least our, our vision with this was even though it would be a little bit more expensive, um, we think it's really nice that they actually have that at least they would at least have those facilities to be able to do it instead of rely on um, machining the, like, the uh, parts somewhere else or creating them somewhere else and have to ship those. Um, so th like because it's based on the 3D printing, it could definitely go up in places where that the material and the cost of uh, manufacturing is more expensive there that we hope that just giving them the accessibility um, helps as well. Yeah, the other part about the prosthetic is that the haptic feedback portion um, takes up probably most of the cost of the device. Um, so if that portion is not necessary for the patient, if they don't require it, um, the cost of the device dramatically goes down as well. Um, it still does require the fact that there is additive manufacturing in the location that's being made. Uh, but it's, we think that it's better to have that option rather than to um, not have it at all. And with the current trend of 3D printing increasingly getting um, cheaper, or we also expect that trend to continue in these low resource settings as well. And Dr. Johnson, who specializes in rehab engineering and works directly with the prosthetics field in Botswana, uh, mentioned that this 3D idea of 3D printing has become very popular. Um, so we're very hopeful that our device can be applicable in a lot of different contexts. And perhaps our final question from Josh Ozer in the chat. What do you view as the battery power constraints for your final design? So um, our device runs in a 1200 milliamp hour battery, uh, 3.7 volts. And um, so we're in the process of doing rigorous power consumption testing. But from our calculations so far, um, using our low current vibration motor and depending on usage patterns, uh, the device should be able to run for, for, for about uh, one to 2.5 days. Um, and so I, 
And also our device is rechargeable using USB type C charger, uh, which is a, a common connector. And so, uh, you know, with daily recharging, users should be able to uh, use the device um, yeah, regularly. Excellent. Thank you so much, Team Modulo. Uh, we really appreciate your presentation. And please join me in a virtual round of applause for all three of our finalist teams. Thank you for those excellent presentations and engagement. <laughs>